And good morning, everybody, and welcome to Friday Morning Bible Study, and I hope you guys are having a great morning. I know I am. You know, um, I woke up really early, man. I just, I was tossing and turning, man, and and I just was like, I couldn't go back to sleep. I was just like, man, this sucks, man. And, and so I just got up and and uh, was listening to, um, you know, the, the word, you know, and, 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 and I got into prayer. and. You know, so, uh, yeah, it was just kind of a weird morning, but uh, praise God, right? So, guys, we're going to be talking about the majesty of the throne today. We're going to be in Revelation chapter uh, 4, verses 1 through 11. So, if you guys want to open up your Bibles to that, that would be awesome. So, uh, you know, I, I'm delighted for you guys to join us today, you know, whether you're, you know, tuning in on YouTube or listening to you know, the Tactical Bible Guy or the Made Free Bible Churches podcasting platforms. I'm excited to connect with you guys, man. I mean, you know, as, as we dive into the depths of God's word, amen. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, with hearts full of gratitude and anticipation. Thank you for this new day and for the opportunity, you know, uh, 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 to dive into your word, you know, and study your word. Lord, as we dive into the book of Revelation, we acknowledge your supreme majesty and your sovereignty over all creation. Um, Lord, you know, we ask for your guidance as we explore Revelation 4. Uh, chapter 4, open our eyes uh, to the truths uh, in, in, the, in, in the vision of your heavenly throne room. You know, help us grasp the depth of your power and the beauty of your presence. You know, may your spirit illuminate our understanding and transform our hearts as we reflect on your eternal reign and the worship that surrounds your throne you know we pray for your wisdom to lead us for your your peace to fill us your your grace to abound in our study draw us closer to you strengthen our faith and help us live at live in the light of your sovereign authority Lord, we put on the full armor of God, which it says in Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Lord, we ask that you rebuild those hedges of protection and those shields around us. Lord, and as we pick up the weapons of warfare, which is the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that you'll send your legion of angels down to fight for us and fight with us, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for your protection, your grace, your mercy. Lord, we yield to you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just yield to you, Heavenly Father. And um, may our time together be enriching and honoring you, Heavenly Father. You know, rebuild those hedges of protection, those shields, Lord. Protect us. Give us traveling mercies, Lord. Let us focus on the things of you and be ambassadors of you. Get this lowly preacher out of the way and let your word go forward. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So let's read the Apostle Creed together. We're doing this all the time now, right? So say, I don't know if you guys don't know what the Apostle Creed is. You know, maybe you guys should check it out, man. It's it's an old it's an old writing, um, you know, and and it's just it, it just shares our belief, right? And it says this: I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of the heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born uh, of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, buried. He descended to hell on the third day. He rose again from the dead, ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, where there he will judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the true Christian church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. So, you know, today we are embarking into one of the most captivating and awe-inspiring sections of the Bible, right? The book of Revelation. So, this book was written, you know, by the Apostle John right uh uh and um uh, while he was on the island of patmos uh it, it, so it, this it, this is just more than mysterious prophecy about the end times it's it's a vision granted to john revealing 
ultimate sovereignty of God, right? And a future and, 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 and the future creation, right? So it's a book that's not only foretells future events, but it also impacts our understanding of God's majesty and our place within his grand design. So our study today, we're going to focus on uh, the whole chapter of Revelation 4, which marks a pivotal moment in the narrative of this book. So the chapters that follow were this, the letters to the seven churches in chapters uh, two and three, where John has relayed messages of encouragement, correction, exhortation to the early Christian communities. So these letters, you know, really, this, these letters, excuse me, these letters uh, address the spiritual state of the churches and their need to remain faithful, you know, admit their, their, their trials and temptations. So Revelation 4, chapter 4, you know, uh, takes us from an earthly context uh, of the churches into a vision of the heavenly throne room, right? So this chapter serves as a trans transition, you know, from the message to the churches to the unfolding vision of what is to come. So it introduces us, you know, to a breathtaking scene of God's throne in heaven and sets the stage for a, a dramatic events that will follow, you know, in the rest of the book, right? So in this vision, John is invited to come up here, right? Uh, and witness what make, uh, what must take place after the letter uh, to the churches. And this invitation signifies um, a shift from earthly to heavenly perspective, you know, uh, allowing John uh, 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 and us, right? to the ultimate glimpse uh, of, of, of the ultimate reality of God's reign and celestial worship that surrounds him, right? So let me try to, there we go. There we go. All right. So the imagery presented in this chapter uh, is rich and profound, right? Providing a glimpse into the majesty and splendor of God's throne in the heavenly realm. So understanding the majesty and sovereignty of God as revealed in chapter four is crucial for our faith journey, right? This chapter helps us grasp the grandeur of God's presence and the centrality of his throne in the universe, right? It, you know, it's a reminder that despite the chaos and uncertainty we might face in our earthly lives, right? God's God is on his throne, right? Sovereign and supreme, right? This vision calls us to acknowledge God's ultimate authority and to worship him with the reverence and awe that he deserves. So as we explore Revelation 4, you know, we will reflect on how this vision of God's throne room impacts our lives as believers. You know, we'll, we will consider the implication of God's sovereignty, right, over our daily lives, right, um, and, and, and our walk with him and, and how this vision can inspire us to live with a greater sense of purpose and devotion. Um. The chapter not only reveals God's eternal reign, but also invites us to a deeper understanding of our own relationship with him. So as we dive into Revelation for today, let's open our hearts and minds uh, to the truths that it holds and allow this vision of God's throne room deepen our awe and reference for the one who reigns forever, right? So may this study enrich you and draw enrich your faith and, and draw you closer to God who is both majestic and intimately involved in our lives. Amen. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, I mean, it's this, this is really, really cool. You know what I mean? Um, if you guys never read revelation, we're going through it methodically breaking it down. I'm doing a gang of study all day and stuff like that. So guys, Let's just read Revelation chapter one, uh, chapter four, verses one through 11. It says, 
it says this after this i look and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which i had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said come up here and i will show you what must take place after this at once uh i was in the spirit and behold the throne stood in uh, stood in heaven with one seated on the throne and he who sat there had an appearance of jasper and carnelian and around his throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of emerald and an emerald uh, around the throne were 24 thrones seated on the thrones were the 24 elders clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads from from the throne came flashes of lightnings and rum, rumble and perils of thunder and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire which are the seven spirits of god and and before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal around the throne on each side of the throne four living creatures full of eyes in the front and behind and the first living creature like a lion and the second living creature like an ox and the third living creature as the face of man and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight and the four living creatures each of them with six wings full of eyes around them and within and day and night never cease to say holy holy is the lord god almighty who was who is uh, who was and is and is to come and whenever the the living creatures give uh, glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne who lives forever and ever the 24 elders would fall down before who is seated on the throne to worship him who lives forever and ever they cast their crowns before them saying worthy are you the lord our god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created amen wow imagine seeing that that'd freak me out it would you know but but i, I you know i'm sure it freaked john out too i mean the, the scripture doesn't say it but i'm sure that he was really 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 startled i would have been being up before the throne of god and looking at god and looking at everything around and i i, I would have been tripping not a tripping in a bad way but i've been tripping so let's get into it let's begin so revelation uh 4 1 we encounter the moment which john receives a divine invitation after this i look and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which i had heard speaking to me like a trumpet says come up here and i will show you what must take place after this so this marks a significant transition in the book of revelation right up to this point john was only recording messages from the seven churches addressing their spiritual conditions offering encouragement and correction right now john is invited to shift his gaze from the earthly realm to the heavenly perspective providing a glimpse into the divine and eternal realities that lie beyond our human experience the open door in this passage symbolizes much more than a mere entryway, right? It represents the access to a deeper understanding of God's divine plan, right? The imagery of, you know, the open door signifies that John is being granted unprecedented opportunity to witness the fullness of God's eternal purpose, right? It's a powerful visual metaphor uh, for uh, divine revelation, right? Suggesting that this open door, uh, 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 the mysteries of God, God's will and future of creation are, are being revealed, right? So the invitation of come up here emphasizes the transition from an earthly uh, viewpoint to a celestial one, right? Highlighting the contrast between uh uh between the limited often trouble human perspective uh and the expansive sovereign view of god's heavenly throne so the invitation 
carries implications for us as believers, right? Just as John was called to witness the heavenly vision, God extends an, an invitation for each and every one of us to enter into a deeper relationship with him, right? This call uh, is an invitation to move beyond surface level understanding and to seek a more comprehensive a comprehension of his will, right? So it, it, it's a reminder that God's desires to reveal his plans and purposes to those who earnestly seek him. You know, by opening the door to uh, uh, divine revelation, God invites us to explore the depths of his wisdom and the beauty of his eternal design. So in practical terms, the invitation challenges us, you know, to pursue a deeper relationship with God through diligent prayer and study of scripture. You know, just as John was called to observe and understanding uh, uh, the unfolding future events, you know, we're called to seek God's guidance and wisdom in all of our lives. The process of seeking God's will requires int an intentionality and willingness to listen for his voice, right? It's about opening our hearts and minds to the truth uh, he wishes to reveal, like allowing the spirit to guide us into a fuller understanding of, the, and of his purpose. So I want to encourage you guys to embrace this divine invitation, you know, and, and foster a spirit of openness and receptivity to God's leading, right? You know, it, it involves creating spaces in our lives where we can hear God's voice above the noise and distractions of daily life. And when I say God's voice, I'm talking about getting involved in scripture, right? You know, a uh, uh, personal study, right? Prayer, communal worship. Right. You know, we are invited to step through the open door and engage more deeply with divine truths that God is revealing. Right. So Revelation 4 1 serves as a powerful reminder of God's desire to draw us deeper, uh, draw us into a deeper relationship with him. The open door symbolizes the invitation access uh, uh, to the divine revelation a witness that's unfolding in his eternal plan. So, you know, let, let us, you know, as we reflect on this passage for a little bit, right? Let us be encouraged guys to seek a deeper understanding of God's will, embracing the invitation to explore the riches of his divine purposes. And, and may we be like John, you know, willing to step through the door, that open door, right? And experience, the power of God's revelation in our lives. Amen. So let's start talking about verses two and three, right? So here, John provides a breathtaking description of his vision of the heavenly throne, right? And it says this, uh, at once I saw the spirit and behold, a throne stood in heaven, the one seated on the throne and he who sat on the throne had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. These verses offer a glimpse into the nature of God's reign in his majestic presence, right? You know, the, the centrality of his throne in John's vision emphasizes the, the, the supreme authority uh, of God. Right. The throne represents. Excuse me, I'm starting to hiccup again. Uh, the throne represents God's ultimate sovereignty and his governing power over all creation. Right. It's not merely a symbol of authority, but the very seat of divine rule. Right. Highlighting God supreme as the supreme ruler of the universe. Right. So this imagery underscores that everything in creation is subject to his will and that governance is both just and perfect, right? That the throne's uh, preeminence uh, uh, in this vision signifies that God's rule is central to the unfolding of all events, both, both in heaven and earth, amen? So the description of God's appearance you know, being at, uh, being like Jasper or Carnelian further conveys, you know, his majesty and his purity, right? 
Jasper, uh, often clear or brilliant, signifies clarity and purity, reflecting God's holiness and perfection. Carnelian, Carnelian is a fiery red hue, represents strength and beauty. Together, these precious stones symbolizes the purity, power, and splendor of God's divine nature. They suggest that God's presence is both radiant and awe-inspiring, embodying his divine attributes in a way that transcends human understanding. The emerald rainbow encircling the throw adds another layer of meaning to the vision. Rainbows are often associated with God's covenant, right? As the Old Testament, uh, uh, when God set a rainbow in the sky was a sign of his promise to Noah that he would never, uh, 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 would never, you know, flood the, the world again, right? So the, the emerald hue of the rainbow in John's vision signifies uh, only the enduring nature of God's promises, but also his mercy and faithfulness, right? So it serves as a reminder that God's covenant uh, with his people is eternal, unchanging, and providing uh, assurance and hope in his unfailing love and grace. So the application of this vision for us today is deeply significant, right? Reflecting on the centrality of God's throne encourages us to recognize and submit to his authority, right? Uh, it, it reminds us that God is sovereign over every aspect of our lives and the world around us, right? You know, uh, uh, in times of uncertainty or difficulty, you know, it's it's crucial uh, 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 to remember that God's throne represents his just rule and his justice and mercy, right? His authority is perfect, right? Uh, 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 and his judgments are righteous, offering comfort and, and security for those who trust in him. You know, so I, I want to I wanna encourage you guys to trust God's sovereignty, right? you know, uh, 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 involves, and, and that involves helping you guys to understand his unchanging uh, nature that provides a solid foundation into the tumult and it often it, 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 tumultuous in this tumultuous world. So the vision of the throne reminds us uh, of God, that God is not distant or detached, but ultimately involved in the governance of the universe. Right. His authority endures that everything unfolds as according to his perfect plan. And when we might not fully comprehend it, by trusting in God's sovereign rule, we find peace and reassurance, knowing that our lives are held securely in his hands. Right. So Revelation verses two and three offers a depiction of God's throne, emphasizing his supreme authority and majesty and faithfulness, the imagery of, of Jasper and Carnelian, which reflects his purity power, uh, while the emerald uh, Brabo signifies his, his eternal covenant and mercy, right? So, you know, guys, let, let us be reminded of the significance of God's sovereignty and find comfort in his unchanging nature. You know, and, and, and trust in, 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 in his divine rule and, and to seek solace in the knowledge that he governs all things in his perfect justice. Right. So let's talk about uh, verses four through eight. Right. So here, John provides a vivid depiction of the worship that takes place around the throne of heaven. Right. He writes around the throne were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their head from from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbles and peals of thunder and before the throne were seven burning torches of fires which are the seven spirits of god and before the throne uh there was uh, uh as it was the where where a sea of glass like crystal, so this passage uh, uh, paints a dramatic picture of the heavenly worship scene, right? Offering deep insights into the nature of God and 
and the response that he elicits from his creation. This is important. The 24 elders seated around the throne represents the redeemed people of God from the Old and New Testaments, right? It's a symbolic number that includes the 12 elders representing the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 elders uh, representing the 12 apostles, right? So their presence signifies unity and exclusiveness, right? Of God's people across different eras, right? Clothed in white garments and wearing golden crowns, these elders reflect the purity and honor bestowed upon the redeemed, right? The, the white garment symbolizes righteousness, while the golden crowns represents victory and authority given by God, right? So their role in the heavenly court underscores the, the significance of their redeemed status and their participation in the eternal worship of God. So the, the, the imagery of, of the thunder and lightning, you know, uh, uh, from, the, from the throne, right, uh, emanating from the throne, highlights God's immense power and majesty, right? So, such phenomenon often signifies an overwhelming uh, and awe-inspiring presence of God, right? So this powerful imagery serves, you know, to remind us, you know, that uh, 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 um, remind us of the majesty of God's presence and the reverence that he commands, right? So the, the dynamic nature of these symbols underscores the idea that God's rule is not only supreme but it but it's also envelop an odd respect right you know the, the manifestation of his power is in in this way emphasizes the importance of approaching him with the highest regard and reverence so the seven torches before the throne represents the seven spirits of god right signifying the completeness and fullness of the Holy Spirit's presence, right? The number seven in biblical terms is often symbolizes completeness and perfection, right? These torches convey that the Holy Spirit is fully present and active, symbolizing his role in perfecting and guiding worship and service that takes place around the throne, right? The sea of glass like crystal further enhances the purity and clarity of God's presence, right? And, and it represents a calm and serene environment, reflecting the purity and holiness that is characterized, you know, uh, uh, that characterizes the divine realm, right? That the sea of glass underscores the tranquility and perfection of God's presence, indicating that his realm, there is no impurity or disturbance. So the... The, the 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 description of worship around the throne provides applications for our lives today as well you know recognizing the majesty and sovereignty of god is central to our understanding of worship right that the scene in revelation 4 invites us to reflect on the importance of worshiping god with the same reverence and awe that is depicted in this vision Right? It challenges us to cultivate a lifestyle of worship that acknowledges God's supreme authority and holiness in our, in our daily lives. Right? Worship is not just a Sunday activity, but a continuous expression of our relationship with God, reflecting his grandeur in every aspect of our lives. Right? So by emphasizing the significance of worship in recognizing God's majesty, right? So, you know, uh, we, we are encouraged, you know, to approach God with humility and reverence, right? The, the heavenly worship scene calls us to consider how we honor God in our daily routines and interactions, right? It challenges us to reflect his holiness and grace in our actions, words, and attitudes, just as the 24 elders and the heavenly beings surrounded the throne right uh, 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 
is in, in continual worship. We're invited to live lives that consistently glorify and honor God. You know, um, so sorry, I get the hiccups. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, so Revelation chapter four verses four and eight offers a powerful description of the worship around God's throne, highlighting the unity of God's people, the awe-inspiring nature of His power, that the completeness of His presence. Uh, and, and as we contemplate this vision, let us be inspired to cultivate a lifestyle of worship, and that reflects the majesty and reverence due to our sovereign God. Right, and, and may our daily lives be marked by an attitude of awe and devotion, acknowledging his holiness, right, of the one who reigns eternally, right? So now we're going to look at, you know, uh, verses 9 through 11, which, which, which provides a glimpse into the worship and praise that continually emanates from the heavenly realm, right? The passage reads, and wherever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him he, who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their thrones, they cast their crowns uh, before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God, re to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and you, and by your will, they exist and were created. So, this description reveals the centrality of worship in the heavenly realms and highlights uh, uh, the response of both living creatures and the elders to God's majesty and sovereignty. So the continuous worship of living creatures uh, and the 24 elders underscores the, the, the inerrant worthiness of God. Right, the living creatures described early and earlier verses were full of eyes and con and constantly praising God. Right, represents the unceasing acknowledgement of God's glory and power. Right, their praise is not mere formality, but a fundamental aspect of their existence, reflecting the boundless majesty of the one who is seated on the throne. Right, their perpetual act of giving glory and honor and thanks to God emphasizes that worship is a natural and essential response to his divine nature and his eternal reign. The 24 elders, on the other hand, demonstrates their, their reverence by falling down before the throne and casting their crowns before God. So this act of casting uh, uh, crowns is symbolic of the recognition that all honor and glory ultimately belong to God, right? The crowns representing victory and authority are placed before God as a sign of ultimate uh, submission and acknowledgement that every achievement and honor is to deri derive from him. So this gesture highlights that despite their esteemed positions, the elders recognize that their authority and achievements are significant compared or insignificant compared to the supremacy of God, right? It's, it's, it's an expression of humility and reverence, illustrating that all glory is due to God alone. So, the elders declaration worthy are you our god our lord and god receive uh glory and honor and power for you created all things and by you by your will they exist and were created so this captures the core reason for god's worthiness right uh, uh the praise ascribes to god that uh, the attributes of his glory honor and power acknowledging him as the creator of all things this recognition of God as the creator emphasizes his supreme authority and the fact that everything exists by his will, right? So it's a reminder 
that God's role as creator is, is foundational to his worthiness of worship and praise. Everything in existence finds its origin and purpose in him, underscoring his sovereignty over all creation, right? Now, a lot of people out there don't really believe, they, they believe in partial sovereignty. They believe that human will has got to react with that. Sorry. Some human will does that, but, you know, I believe, and I'm a staunch believer. And if you guys want to check out, I wrote a blog about this too, man. The once saved, always saved. So if you guys go to the tactical uh, bibleguy.com website, and go to the blog, you will see that I have several blog posts there. You know, one is, is to, you know, how should we vote as Christians in the U S elections? You know, you have some false teachings on there, some biblical pastors on there. And then you have one. So it, once saved, always saved. And you'll see that that was like, maybe the, I think that's the, the third uh, or fourth blog that I wrote. So go check that out, man. And, and, and it's scriptural. You know what I mean? People are like, man, I believe you can lose your salvation. Well, if you believe that you can lose your salvation, you don't have a proper understanding of what salvation is and how it, it, the, the, how it is eternal that you can never lose it. Right. So uh, it just gives you your, your, it's just, you know, it's just a part of It's just a, a part of immaturity. Right. So let's get back this, this focus. I go on these little tangents, man. But let, let's get back to this. Um, so in application, the passage calls us to recognize God's inerrant worthiness and reflect uh, on our role as stewards of his grace, right? Just as the, as it says, the having, uh, heavenly beings acknowledge God's supreme authority and honored him with their worship, we are called to live in a manner that honors God in every aspect of our lives. This means recognizing that our achievements, authority, and blessings come from God and are ultimately meant to glorify him. The act of casting crowns before God serves as a model for us to offer our lives and efforts in service to him, acknowledging that all we have is a gift from his hand, right? So, you know, I want to encourage you guys you know, to, to embody this attitude that involves fostering a lifestyle of worship that extends beyond former, former worship service, right? It means living with the awareness of God's sovereignty and expressing our gratitude with reverence through our actions, decisions, and relationships. And by recognizing God's worthiness and aligning our lives with his will, we reflect his glory and honor him as the rightful Lord of our lives. And, and, and as we do so, you know, we join in eternal worship that takes place around the heavenly throne, living out our role as faithful stewards of his grace and acknowledging his supreme authority in all we do. So, In Revelation uh, 4, verses 9 through 11, you know, uh, 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 offers, you know, uh, a vivid portrayal of the unceasing worship and praise that's that's characterized in the in 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 the in the in the in the realm. Um, the continuous worship of living creatures, you know, uh, and the act of casting crowns before the other high that, you know, and, and it does, man. So, um so in conclusion of our, our, our exploration of, of Revelation 4 has unveiled a vision of God's throne and heavenly, and heavenly worship that surrounds it, right? We, we've seen John's awe-inspiring glimpse into the heavenly realm, right? Where, where the centrality of God's throne underscores his supreme authority and reign over all creation. The depiction of the throne uh, adorned with precious stones and encircled with a radiant rainbow speaks of the majesty, purity, and faithfulness of God, right? Surrounding his divine throne are continuous worships of living creatures. 24 elders highlights the response of all creation uh, to God's uh, unrivaled greatness. 
So the heavenly worship scene reveals key aspects of God's nature, right? We see the centrality of God's throne symbolizes his ultimate authority and perfect government and eternal kingdom. You know, um, living creatures continually offer glory, honor, and thanks to God, emphasizing his worthiness and his, his inerrant response uh, of worship that his majesty elicits, right? The act of casting crowns before thrones symbolizes the honor and achievement and ultimately belong to God, reinforcing the idea that our success and authority are derived from his grace and sovereignty, right? So these truths have significant impl implications in our lives as believers, right? Recognizing God's majesty and sovereignty invites us to reflect deeply, deeply uh, on our own response to him, right? You know, just as, as the heavenly beings offer their worship and submission, we are called to approach God with reverence and awe. Right. Our worship should extend beyond the confines of, of of formal settings and 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 permeate every aspect of our lives. It, it is a call to to live in a manner that honors God's supreme authority, acknowledging that we have and all we have acknowledging that all we have and all we are is a result of his divine will. Right. So, <laughs> as we conclude, I invite each and every, every one of you guys, right, to take a moment and to reflect on the grandeur of God's throne and continuous worship that takes place in his heavenly presence. And consider how this vision of God's majesty can influence uh, uh, our personal walk with him right are there areas in our lives where 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 we need to you know where you need to 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 recognize his sovereignty more fully how can you deepen your relationship with god through worship and seek his guidance earnestly so let's commit of, of fostering a lifestyle of worship that reflects our understanding of god's greatness right to to, to seek to to honor him in every decision, relationship, and endeavor, to embrace the opportunity to worship him, not only through our words, but through our actions, demonstrating his glory and grace in all that we do. And by doing so, we align our life with the eternal worship that takes place around God's throne, right? Be uh, becoming a living testament to his majesty and sovereignty. So, in closing, may the vision of God's throne and, and worship surrounding, you know, it may, may it, uh, uh, it may it, it inspire us to live with a renewed sense of reverence and devotion. You know, let us be continually reminded of God's ultimate authority and grace, striving to reflect his holiness and to seek his guidance in every facet of our lives. And may our hearts be ever attuned to the call of worship and, and our lives bear witness to the glory of the one who reigns forever and ever and ever. So guys, before I let you go, man, if you guys haven't checked it out, you know, go to the Tactical Bible Guy uh, and May Free Bible Church websites, right? At mayfreechurch.org and tacticalbibleguy.com, right? And so guys, I also want to, you know, encourage you guys to go check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, like, comment, share, you know, uh, uh, man, you know, the, the more that we can get these out, the more lives that we can touch with the gospel, the gospel. And don't forget, to check out on your favorite podcasting platforms, the May Free Bible Church and the Tactical Bible Guy podcasting platforms, right? And uh, uh, so, so go check that out. Also, go check out, uh, you know, May, uh, check out May Free Church, May Free Bible Church, and Tactical Bible Guy. We're on True Social, we're on Rumble, we're on Patreon. Go like, subscribe, support uh, that. And also, guys, we have a clothing line that is called tactical apparel. 
Uh, so go check that out, the clothing line on the Tactical Bible Guy website, which is tacticalbibleguy.com. All proceeds for that go into our homeless ministry, which is Believers in Christ. And what that is, is it's where a bunch of believers from different churches, different walks of life, all come together and go out to the homeless encampments and go out and feed the homeless and bring a church service to them. And, you know, it's been so receptive and we've seen people give their lives over to Christ and, and, and get off the street and stuff like that. They got off drugs. And, you know, um, at one, one lady, uh, she was so distraught. She goes, she wanted to learn. She always grabbed her Bible because we were there every Sunday. Right. And she was like, man, I'm so glad you guys come man. but I'm still using drugs and da, 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 da. And I'm like, look, let God just work in you. You know, and uh, next thing you know, she's, you know, somewhere in Apple Valley, you know, living in a place, you know, so God blessed her. Right. So things can happen. So, you know, help support us. And if you guys want to buy anything uh, right now, you can only buy it on the Tactical Bible. Well, it's Tactical Apparel on the TikTok shop uh, and stuff. So you guys can check it out there. Uh, we have a bunch of Tactical Bible guy trump stuff we've got you know a lot of stuff that has a lot of scripture too and a lot of meaning um i do all the designs myself so all the monies that are collected from you guys going out and buying stuff uh goes into feeding the homeless right so guys i want to thank you guys for being in this bible study today i'm so grateful for your presence and participation so stay blessed stay engaged and continue to seek the richness of god's wisdom in all you do amen Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Fathers, we conclude our time together with awe at the vision of your throne and the eternal worship that surrounds us. Surround it. Yeah, you know, we thank you for revealing your majesty and sovereignty that define your reign over all creation. Lord, we are humbled by the reminder that all, that all honor and glory belong to you alone. You know, help us carry the, this vision into our daily lives, living in a way that honors your supreme authority. And may we reflect your greatness in our actions, decisions, and relationships, recognizing your hand in all that we do. Teach us to worship you, not only with our words, but through our lives, seeking your guidance and reflecting your grace in every aspect. Grant us the strength to deepen our relationship with you, embracing a lifestyle of reverence and devotion. May our hearts be continually attuned to your will, and may we always seek to honor you in all things that we do. Mm. Thank you, Lord. We entrust ourselves to your care and guidance, knowing that you are worthy of all the glory, honor, and power. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And as you guys go forth, may you carry the vision of of his majesty and sovereignty in, in your in, in your hearts, living each day in reverent worship and steadfast faith. May his presence guide you, his grace sustain you, and his peace fill you now and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. Go in peace, God bless.